Well, we are about a month into places of worship closing their doors to congregants, and now we've learned that some have had to lay off their staff. Those that rely on donations during services are suffering the most. CBS 2's Lisa Rosner has more. From crowds filling the pews to the choir preaching to an empty Canaan Baptist Church on West 116th Street in Harlem. But as the coronavirus toll progressed, the church that once welcomed Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Nelson Mandela went 100% virtual. Slowly vanishing are the offerings collected at Sunday church services. We've got about 14 um, on staff. Um, and uh, we are operating with uh, maybe half of that now. Pastor Alan Boyer of the First Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church of Patterson in the same position with funding down nearly 50%. We had to let our organist go. We had to let our, our janitor go. Also relying on Sunday donations is the Lighthouse Assembly of God in Newark. Pastor Pablo Pizarro heads the Christian Pentecostal Church and says there's been no cuts, and he's trying to multiply the messaging. But we want to pray for your families. One thing that we are in the business of is hope. The Diocese of New York says contributions are down by more than 50%, but there are no furloughs. However, the Diocese of Brooklyn, which includes Queens, has seen some parishes have to lay off staff or reduce hours. Reverend Stephen Bauman of Manhattan's Christ Church, which is United Methodist, says prior to the pandemic, it had been moving toward online donations. We are more dependent upon pledges, that is, people who have made a commitment for the whole year. We often say, it's okay to change the method, but don't tamper with the message. Soon this, this will be over uh, because um, trouble don't last always, the Bible tells us. Donations on Palm Sunday and Easter would have covered these parishes for large chunks of the year. Now to fill the gap, all of them are increasing ways to donate online and applying for small business loans. On the Upper West Side, Lisa Rosner, CBS 2 News.